All right, folks, we want to do some linear transformations and combining of random variables. All right, so this is a review of things that we've seen in the past. We've seen linear transformations before. So um, we're basically taking some new variable, you could call it y, that equals my old variable, and I'm multiplying it by something and making it into something new. So I'm saying mu of the new y. Well, how is it related to my mu of my x. Well, if I multiply x by something, does it affect the mean? Yeah, it affects the mean predictably by multiplying it by a. If I add something to every single value in my table, will it move the mean? Yeah, it shifts the mean b to the right. And so you can see that the mean will be multiplied by a and shifted b to the right, okay? If it's positive, it's negative, it'll shift to the left, whatever. Um, but it's predictable. If you multiply every data point by a number and then add something, so let's say that like um, the, uh, the average um, amount of electricity that you use in a month is some value X, or the amount of electricity that you use is some continuous variable x and then you multiply it by a and add b to every single number because there's a cost for that plus the initial cost of like um the carrying fee or something like that then you start seeing you've transformed the old mean of the amount of kilowatt hours to now a mean cost which is this new variable y okay now if you look at standard deviation what happens to the standard deviation sigma when I multiply everything by A and add B to it? Well, does multiplication affect the spread of this variable? Yeah. Now, when I add stuff, right? So when I multiply, it makes it wider or whatever. But when I add something, all it does is it shifts it to the side without changing its spread. And so we would not expect this B to affect the sigma. And what you see is exactly that same thing is that my sigma, and I guess this should have a little subscript of X on it, my sigma of x gets multiplied by a just like we learned way back in like chapter two that multiplication affects the spread and the standard deviation mean and measures of center are affected by both multiplication and addition okay now what if i'm combining two random variables so i have like the the monthly cost of electricity plus the monthly cost of paying my employees okay if i add those two costs together, the two distributions, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to get a mu of x plus mu of y. You can just add their means together. So once again, that's exactly the way you would expect it to be. Um, or like, um, there's a, there's plenty of problems, but like you can talk about the, the amount of money you'll make one way and the amount of money you'll make the other way and you can just add the two means together. All right, so if you have a distribution X and a distribution Y, you can just combine their means, uh, which is nice. When it's random variables and you're trying to combine them, um, the standard deviation, the variance can only be combined if they're independent of one another. And a lot of the talk and the homework is, which of these cases do you think is independent? And a lot of our questions in class have been, how can you tell if something's independent? It's not always obvious, okay? Um, the independence, if you're looking at SAT scores, are those independent of each other? Well, let's see. If someone gets a high math score, do you think that it's completely random where they're going to fall in their verbal scores? Or do you think that they'll tend to score higher verbally because they're also strong mathematically and maybe they're just strong students? Because they're not independent, we can't actually calculate their standard deviations and what happens when you combine their standard deviations. But notice, we're not actually adding standard deviations. We're going to add the variances. So when you look at this, we're adding the variance of x plus the variance of y. So you need to square my standard deviation of both of them and then add them together. And what you start seeing is this is kind of like a squared plus b squared equals the new c squared all right so it's kind of a pythagorean relationship now if you also think back to my working definition of variance variance is the cumulative variability in a distribution so how much variability is there in the distribution of x well the variance is the is all of it how much variance 
or variability is there in y? Well, the variance measures all of it. So we take all of the variability in x and all the variability in y and we put it together and we get all of the variability that is in the combined x and y. And then you would just take the square root of this and now you have the standard deviation of x plus y. Okay? So these means, what are the mean and standard deviation if we add them together? Well, the mean we can get by doing mu of x plus y is just mu of x plus mu of y, which comes out to 519 plus 507, which is 1026. Six, I said six and wrote seven. Um, but these, they're not independent, and so we cannot actually calculate their standard deviation. Okay, so the sigma of x plus y equals question mark. We're uncertain. Now, let's look at something that might be independent. Okay. Um, a lot of times it'll say, um, let's assume that they're independent. Okay. So Linda's truck sales, um, those are the car sales that we talked about earlier. This is how she sells trucks. Okay. Um, take X to be the number of cars, Y to be the number of trucks. She gets a 25% profit on each vehicle she, she sells. Okay. She expects to earn, um, $350 per car because the cars don't cost as much as selling trucks and SUVs, and she expects to make $400 per SUV. So notice this is a linear transformation where we're multiplying X by something, okay? So this day, she we would, we would multiply everything times 350, and then instead of cars sold, it would be the money from cars. And if we multiply this times 400, we would transform our random variable to the money for um, trucks and SUV. Okay. Um, but the probabilities would all stay the same, but we don't need to transform every single number, transform every single number, and then recalculate the expected value. The expected value of this is just going to be the mu of Z is the mu of 350 X plus um, 400 Y, which is really the mu of 350 X plus the mu of 400 Y which is really just 350 times mu of x plus 400 times mu of y, okay? So like the math is exactly what you'd expect. So um, if we had the mean of this, which I think it was 1.1, okay? That's zero plus 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.3, we get 1.1. And so 350 times that is 385 plus here, we just get 0, 0.5, and 0.2, and so this is coming out to 0.7. So if we do 400 times 0.7, we get 280. And so the expected commission, okay, this is, I think it's per day, okay, um, is $665, okay? Now, if I wanted to get sigma of Z, well, we would need to start by getting the sigma of mu of 350x and squaring that, okay? So the, the standard deviation, which I don't have offhand, okay? But the new sigma of x, let's say it's 0.7, um, okay? Um, what would happen to it? Well, sigma of 350x does, multiplication does affect it. So we would get 350 times 0.7, um, which comes out to 245, okay? And the sigma of y, let's just say that it is um, like 0.3. And so we would get the sigma of 400y ends up being 0.3 times 400 ends up being 120. And now if I wanted the sigma of Z, we would need, well, we can get sigma of Z squared. The variance of Z equals the variance of 350 X plus the variance of 400 Y. All right. So we'd have to do 245 squared plus 120 squared. And we're getting 74, 425. That's the variance. That's the cumulative variability in this combined data set. And then if I take the square root, 
um, we get about 272, okay? 0.8, and that would be the variance, the, the standard deviation of the combined variables x and y, or 350x and 400y, this guy. All right, so um, linear transformations and combining random variables. You can, the transformations for the means happen exactly the way you would expect. Multiplication affects the mean, addition affects the mean. You can just add the means. For standard deviation, it gets a little messier. You can multiply the standard deviation, but addition doesn't change it. And if you're adding distributions, you add their variances. And even if you're subtracting standard deviations or distributions, you add their variances. So anyhow, have a great day and good luck on your work.